Boopity Schmooples, it's Noodle House here, and we're back on Chaos Child. Kunasato stared at me. Her expression was as stern as ever. Eventually, she did something to her computer. It displayed a different set of data than before. Huh? For some reason, it felt like being driven further and further into a dark cave. This is Noe's medical account. It's dated November 21st, 2009. It was a hospital affiliated with AH Tokyo General. You said you're a patient here after the earthquake, right? Which means that this is where Renault would have been given her counsel. But there are no records of Renault prior to this date. Correct, Momose? We couldn't find a family register or anything else, Momose said, but voice sounded unreal and far away. That's impossible. I know he's always been with me since I was a little kid. She lived next door, right? That's right. At the time, you lived in the sixth floor condo at the end of a hall. Your names were named Arai. Arai? 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 They were an elderly couple who retired from the company they ran. They had no children. My heart beat louder. It was aggravating me. It was a strange sensation. I was hearing all the words, but I couldn't understand what they meant. Even my breathing was getting faster. No, she lived next to me. Her parents were neglecting her. Did you ever meet those parents of hers? No, right? You said she didn't have any friends. Before the earthquake, did you actually see her talking to anyone besides you? That's... I hadn't. But that was because she didn't have any friends. When we sometimes went outside, she was always with me, and she never left my side for an instant. Kunasato tapped at a keyboard and a screen changed. This is your chart. It was also found at the hospital. If only I found it sooner, she whispered. At some point I started crying. I couldn't see the screen through my blurry vision. It says the cause of your coma was unknown. They probably had no idea of the presence of the causal factor. Instead, they had notes from a psychiatrist at another hospital. Another hospital? Psychiatrist? I've never been to another hospital. It must have been some mistake. It's dated 2006. So imagine when you were in third grade, heavily relying on an imaginary friend, it says. Huh? Imaginary friend? A friend who only exists in your fantasies. In my fantasies? That's not true. A voice in my head said over and over. What the fuck? Imaginary friends, Imaginary friends themselves are very common. It's not a disease. Around 30% of infants have them. There are fans of the occult who say that when an infant talks to an empty space because they can see ghosts. I'm sure you've at least heard of these stories, right? You're lying. But very few people maintain that they're imaginary friends until puberty. It's distinct from dissociative identity disorder. But if you ask me, the symptoms are almost identical. Yeah, knowing you described from before the earthquake was always jealous of you, right? She was also a neglected child, but she said that you were better off than her. I tried to yell at her to stop, but my throat hurt too much for me to speak. The taste of blood filled my mouth. I must have bit my lip. I'd started crying without even realising it. The vast majority of imaginary friends are friendly. That's because they fulfill the desire for esteem. No. Transference from the negative facts onto an imaginary friend is actually something that more commonly seen in identity disorders, but... I'm telling you, you're wrong. Gensato's words were cold and uncompromising. It wasn't Inoue that was told she was crazy or abnormal. It was you, and you transferred that onto her, Takaru Miyashiro. Don't lie to me. Miyashiro. I felt a soft hand on my shoulder and turned to look. I'm not real either. It was Aramura. She looked at me like I was a young child in need of tender care. Stop it. Don't look at me that way. Kunosato is telling the truth. All the feelings inside me went cold when I heard the, her words. Aramura said she was telling the truth. So she was. But then... I didn't want it to be true, because if it was... Then I'm the one who killed Nono. 
That means in the end, I'm the one who killed her. That's enough for me, Kunisato. I suddenly heard a voice. What? I turned around and saw someone in front of the door. It was someone I knew well. Anoe? That's right. It was a Serika Anoe. She was different in every way from how she'd been in the newspaper club. There was an expression on her face that I couldn't read at all. You. Wait, I'm not here to fight. The hell you aren't. It's true. Arimura, can you put that away? Arimura had unleashed her die sword. She was glaring at Serika and pointed it straight at her. If I to hurt you, I won't just walk in the door like this. Wait, wait. Why was Serika here? What was she doing? Was she saying she wasn't here to fight to make me let my guard down and then kill me? No, forget that. Why did she kill Nono? All these thoughts slipped through my mind before I could really think about any of them. But then they all came together to form the biggest question of all. Did I create her? That's right. It's just you thinking, Takaru Miyashiro. Serika was looking at me dead in the eye. Was she reading my mind? I felt like she could read everything I was thinking. You created me during the earthquake. Well, she said in the earth, one thing I didn't want to admit. So I found myself looking towards Aramura, who had drawn a die sword and readied it again. Aramura nodded slowly, without taking her eyes off Serika. I knew it was her way of saying that she was telling the truth, but still, my heart refused to admit it. That's a lie, it has to be. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up, hold up. So he's a... He's a sci- Okay. Okay, I'm trying to put this together because this makes no fucking sense even in the world of this. Of, of this. So, during the earthquake, when he got his powers to be able to move shit, to be psychokinetic, he created someone. Somehow. What the fuck, first of all? What? Okay. Okay, whatever. Because, because Serika was important to me as no-no, apparently. What the- I don't- this has just gone off the rails all of a sudden. Like this has gone like, here's a twist, but it makes no sense. Even defined by the laws of this world, which seemingly have no laws, it doesn't make sense. But whatever. A phone started to vibrate in someone's pocket. Serika's expression changed inf infinitesimally. That's my phone. I put my hand in my pocket. I won't take anything else out. So got it. Ina. Serika looked at Aramura as she spoke. And she spoke. And she spoke. Aramura was instantly able to tell she was telling the truth. What she's saying is true. Put it on speaker. You're a suspicious woman. Serika nodded and took out her phone. She went to put it on speaker mode, but before she did, she looked up. Her eyes met with mine. Takuru Miyashiro, get ready for something else. You're about to be here with something that's the same as the grace than anything that's come before. I don't want to see your mind destroyed. What are you... What are you saying, Sarika? Before I could ask, she put her hand on the phone and answered the call. Hey, you made it for easier? I heard that voice before. But I couldn't tell whose it was. No, that wasn't right. I didn't want to. It was rare to hear his voice from Sarika's phone anyway. Whenever he needed something, he'd always call me or Nono. How do I know I was here? I guess that's a stupid question. Yeah, I knew if he told you, you'd go running straight there. I've never seen Serika spit like that. And this time her face was red with anger. So how's Luke? Is Takaru there? When I heard the name Takaru, I shivered. I knew it. There's no way I can mistake that voice. Whose voice is it now? What the fuck is this shit? Okay, I knew why Serika would tell me to be ready for a shock. The voice. Hey, Takaru, you there? Right, it's me. Oh, for fuck's sake. It's a voice of my father, Wataru Sakuma. Why is he the... Why? I don't... I don't get it. I, this is ridiculous. This is actually ridiculous. I couldn't speak. The ground beneath me seemed to shift as I felt sick. The phone seemed to stick out clearly while everything else faded away. Sakuma Dr. Sakuma? So that's it, huh? They knew everything we were up to then. 
Hey Taku, are you listening? Hello? Dad, why? No, so you are though. What, I know he hasn't told you yet? Tell me what? Tell me what? Why is Dad calling Sarakis phone? I know it, and I planned the whole thing. I didn't understand what he meant. But I could hear my heart pounding loudly. We planned the whole thing from the start. It was a lot of work, you know. I know, and I had to work as a team to get all this stuff ready. You are not a team! I finished away from her. Sarek was staring at the phone with a look on her face I'd never seen before. But it's the truth, isn't it? We both work hard to kill them all. Utani, the precog, Takiyanagi, the one who controlled emotions, the mind reader, what was his name? Uh, the one who worked at Koshin. Well, it doesn't matter. Watabe, Haide, and Yui and Nono too. You and I accomplished all that together. That's my dad's voice. There was no mistaking it. The names Yui and Nono echoed in my mind. Accomplished? Together? I felt like I needed to vomit. The taste of stomach acid rose into my mouth. It's very morbid when it comes to that shit. I fell to my knees, unable to stand. Drool and vomit dribbled out of the corner of my mouth and onto the floor. Ugh. Well, that's grim. Okay. I remember was saying something to me. I could hear the words, but I couldn't understand them. This was a dream. It was just a bad dream because... Why would Dad do that? Look up! Dan and Serica had killed them? Killed Yui? Killed Nono? Killed two of our family? Look at me! What? What the hell? I didn't make any sense at all. What the hell's going on? Look at me, Takaru Miyashiro! Our eyes met. Serika was looking at me, her expression fierce. Everything will be fine. She looked straight into my eyes. I'm here for you. Everything will be fine. Fine? How could anything be fine? That's quite the statement. Serika's eyes narrowed as she looked at Kunisato. Don't worry, Mia Kunisato. I have no intention of trying to make you understand. Nor do I want to be on your people's side. <laughs> Kunisato and Aramura went pale. <laughs> you. So that's your power. Mind reading. You're sharp, that's right. Oh, you're sharp, that's right! Same kind of thing Kakita had. <laughs> hey, Taku, you listening? <laughs> Come on, tell me you're there. Dad, why? What's going on? <laughs> I told you, I know and I did it all. But why? What's her Sakuma works? Sakuma works for the committee. Serika said the word like she was disgusted by it. I mean, Kinosato heard it, her face filled with anger. More precisely, a very small organisation that works for them. He was one of the ones doing Gigomaniac research in that basement. They decided the psychics accidentally created by the Shibuya earthquake were a threat to their plan, so they hunted them down and killed them. I helped in exchange for the promise to allow you to live. I felt like I couldn't breathe. The air was just leaking out of my mouth. Dad was what? I know it, you seriously plan to take Takaru and run? You break your promise, I'll do what I want. That's not what I mean. Do you think that's possible? Just a second. Yeah, it seems okay. Turn on the TV, any channel is fine. What? Just do it, you got a TV there, right? Someone, probably Mimose, turned on the TV. The voice of the TV announcer filled the room. Oh fuck, I missed that. This case attracts a lot of attention because the police used the suspect's real name despite his, his being a minor. Fine, minor. Takaru Miyashiro, who is wanted as a person of interest in the case, has just sent a message to the media. <laughs> what? Serika turned and looked at me. I don't understand, I didn't do that. The message delivered from the form of an email says that he plans to take his own life tomorrow in the middle of the Shibuya Restoration Festival. The police say the message contains information known only to them and the killer, and so they decide they were sent by Takaru Miyashiro himself. I could hear myself that a short scream. What the hell was this? 
What was going on? Sakuma. Sakuma, you. Well, you said you were going to take Takuma right away, so that's kind of something to get you to change your mind. Don't worry, the part about Taylor's own life is just an exaggeration. Everybody participated in the festival tomorrow, which is to say, everybody in the city will be searching for him so they can watch him die. You can try hiding in Frisia. All I have to do is leak a little bit of information on the internet and that will be the end of that. There's no place for him to hide. Scum. In a way, what will you do? If you're willing to give up on Takaru, I'd still like to work with you. There's still hunting to be done after all. There was a short silence. Hearing the two of them talk about me didn't seem real. It was like watching the world from the other side of a pane of glass. Fine. But I have one condition. Oh, what's that? Let me kill you. Huh? Where are you right now? Tell me something to come kill you. His voice suddenly cut off. There was a heavy silence as he tried to figure out what she meant. In other words, the answer is no. Takuro Miyashiro is the reason I exist. I wonder anyone heard him. Are you serious? It's been six years since I kept fucking. No, not you! I just... Shut up, Siri. It's been six years since I became real during the earthquake. I've been killing people for you ever since. Don't underestimate me. <laughs> I heard it sound like an animal's laugh. It's my father's laugh, the one I used to hear at the Albedon. Oh, they're so cute when they're stubborn. You just got your stomach ripped open. You think you can kill me? <laughs> Fine. I'll play along. Come to where it all began, okay? Where it all began? You don't know what I mean? You know everything about the case? No. This and the one that happened six years ago, where all of it began. There. There, huh? That's right. Let's see if we can't match this time too. It'll be more dramatic that way. It's a perfect place for you to die, isn't it? Of course, bring Takaru to And I'm gonna end the episode here. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like in the section below. And if you want to see more of this, then do subscribe to the channel as I upload every day. Thank you for watching, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.